The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Lisa from the South Australian Tourism Commission. Uh, we're just giving a couple more minutes for people that are joining us, logging on at the moment, and we'll be started in about a minute or so. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much again to everyone for joining us today. We're very excited to welcome Mary Ann Kennedy from A Taste of South Australia. Hi, Mary Ann. How are you doing today? Very well, Lisa, and hello to everybody in the States and Canada, <laughs> if you will. And Canada. Um, yeah, it's great. We, we really appreciate you taking the opportunity uh, to join us to learn more about what's going on in Adelaide with Mary Ann. Um, but first, I'll just give you a brief overview, a brief overview of today. Um, We'll be just taking through a, a generic presentation on Adelaide, and I know that most of you are familiar with Marianne and the fantastic touring that she offers um, and wine touring, et cetera. But I think we really wanted to focus on the opportunity to showcase Adelaide to your clients who are coming in and don't really have too much time to spend in the city. You know, perhaps they're, they're booking their way through to Kangaroo Island or, you know, up to Flinders Ranges or Air Peninsula, et cetera. Um, but there are so many things that you can take advantage of while you're in Adelaide, even if it's for a half day. So Marianne offers some fantastic shared touring experiences. Um, and we'll specifically look today at an insider's Adelaide touring itinerary um, that she can put together for your clients based on their food and wine experiences, um, arts and culture, a mix of shopping, and really just to get a best of the city. So it's, uh, it's a great conversation piece with clients when, when booking to this region, knowing what is available, and especially with time in mind. Um, so Marianne, I, I guess you're best to, uh, to address a lot of these um, ideas and itineraries. So I'll pass it over to you. And just a reminder for everyone, please uh, have any questions typing through um, in the chat box there. We'll be sure to answer them at the very end. Well, hello again. So uh, it's now over 25 years that I've been operating. And we did find that there was a need for shorter periods of time within, in and around Adelaide. So um, we have obviously the four small group tours uh, that are day tours, but the Insiders Adelaide is really starting to pick up. So obviously you can still pick up a half hour period within Adelaide, um, and I'm finding more and more people that are trying to connect with different flights, and they don't want to waste that, that half day or six hours or five hours that they have in Adelaide. And that is the beauty of Adelaide, is that you can fit in a lot of period, a lot of things within a short period of time. Um, right now in Adelaide, obviously the central markets is always one of the big hubs that no matter what, we'll always try to incorporate. And I think people are really appreciating the architecture and the, the arts that's happening in and around Adelaide. Right now we have um, an exhibition that's in Adelaide exclusively for five months which is on uh, the fashion icons. And uh, we've just started, we did last night, or a couple of nights ago, um, a dusk walk where we did wine bars included and seeing the, um, the art fashion icons at the art gallery, then doing some nice little wine bars in and around the city because there's quite a movement now. Right in front of us now you can see Hayden, so many of you might recognise him. So we do do a lot of tours where we will incorporate some Aboriginal experience. And I think this is an ongoing thing. Many times people are heading up into the north and they might have an in-depth one, but we can still use Hayden, particularly for um, larger groups. Um, but we'll often incorporate other experiences as well too. I'm finding often with the walks, it might be family groups where we have someone who's maybe 70 and um, some teenage daughters and so, or and everybody has a different interest. I did put in here the convention centre which they've just extended and it's quite exciting all around the riverfront because there's the walk through over to the, the new, uh, well the, the newly renovated um, Adelaide 
oval and there's over the summer there's going to be lots of new pop-up restaurants and things all around the waterfront. So all these organisations all around the riverfront are all banding together and there's this real sort of cultural creative feel that's happening and um, we can incorporate a lot of those things in because I think a lot of people interpret Adelaide as being boring and that there's nothing much to do and that you know it really is about these um, insiders um, information and, and knowing a bit more about what's interesting because people are always amazed. Um, in the Botanic Gardens, this is one of my favourite places, the, the Palm House, but all around there we have the Department of Economic Botany and the roses are all in bloom right at the moment. So we're, we're the rose capital of Australia and the roses are looking brilliant. So even on the day tours we'll often maybe pop into the rose gardens before we start heading out. So um, I think the, the markets are, are a, a big big part of it and um, we've started to do a bit more with the cooking schools. They seem to fade in and out but I think that's all starting to, people want a lot more hands-on experience. So right at the moment it's all about the strawberries and um, obviously cheese too. There's a Say Cheese have opened another little cafe around the corner in the markets and um, lots of new restaurants and things happening in and around Adelaide. As you can see there's figs and cheese and um, beautiful fruits right at the moment and the citrus is looking fantastic. Um, Harndorf, uh, we still do a lot of things even on these half day tours where uh, it might be a bit of Adelaide and up into the uh, Harndorf. Uh, there's strawberry farms up there as you know, the chocolate and the wine matching and there's some gorgeous little guest houses and things that we will connect with even if we're incorporating you know, one day or half day plus a, a walking tour and um, so we've tried to offer a lot of options too so that people if they wanted to, if you're staying up in the regions you can still stay at these gorgeous little places in the hills and still incorporate one of our day tours or even the walking tours. You know we're, we're often seeing groups where there's a focus, you can see here getting into the markets and the paraca, the more um, for those that are very much into the industries. Antiques. The other day it was all about antique jewellery. I had a woman who was who collected antique jewellery and was looking for watches as well too. And Adelaide's quite famous for um, handles, antique handles. And um, as many of you know, Rodney Regina Twist had a lot of antique places and which are incorporated into their properties but we got, often that is a theme that people are interested in and furniture um, this is the apothecary and um, we've just used this again um, the restaurant's wonderful but also it, with the walking tours um, the other night we had a group where we did the fashion icons we went into the gallery so we were up in a bar up the top and I had a beautiful um, champagne that followed through on the French connection but she made by an Australian woman to proof and then we went through to the apothecary which is their restaurant downstairs and that's where we had was beautiful sitting outside and now, various winemakers quickly, joined us. Um, can you talk specifically I see this is included in, in the dusk tour and I know that that's included in sort of your insiders Adelaide itineraries here um, and this is a shared tour correct? Yes. And so we had about, eight. Yeah, what it, how, do the, how do the departures work and you know what's included typically in this itinerary? Well, with all of these tours at the moment, we, um, we, we've said 10, 10 a.m. starts, uh, 2, 8, 2 p.m. starts, uh, but with the, with the dusk, um, you know, the weather, the timing can change on that one as well too. So we're about to sort of roll that out, but um, obviously, um, in, as we get into the summer, I wanted to incorporate the, um, particularly the the, um, the fashion icons as well too. So again, it's sort of it's a bit of an ad hoc, but I would say six o'clock is probably a starting time. But we would start early if we were going to try to do some of the art gallery as well too. So that would be like at the moment that one started at three. So I'm fairly flexible on the um, the dusk tours right at the moment because of time changes. Because as we move into the summer, it's nine o'clock before it gets dark. But that's where going into the the wine bars and um, seeing some of the architecture is good. But if we're trying to incorporate some of the um, the 
admission places, as in the art gallery and the museum, then we know that we have to do that part earlier um, before they close at um, 5 o'clock, unless of course it's a Friday where things might be open a bit later. Perfect, and it's great to so, well for um, people that are, that are arriving, you know, maybe they've connected from Sydney or Melbourne or they've come in from another place in Australia. It's good to know it. that there's something available in the evening, so it's not just, okay, we'll check you into your hotel, get a bite to eat and call it a day. There's so much to do in Adelaide at night, and I think, you know, especially on Fridays as well, knowing when the city is open late, you know, most shops are open um, well into the evening and night, and that's when people are out, and it's really... Um, that's it, and there's buskers in the street and uh, all sorts of things that are happening. Um, but at the moment, because they're my tours, I don't have a problem if... if and a lot of it is um, is, is you as, as premiers telling me what, what your clients are needing, and that's what's happened. Like I'd originally started with the walking tours at nine, and we tried to incorporate it, but 10 seemed to be the good time that we could still get people in and um, and same way with the 2 o'clock in the afternoon and, and we would say 6 but I think you know dusk can be you know particularly through the winter a little bit earlier than um, how, how long we can extend it um, in the evening. Uh, also there's uh, with the we're going to have a lot more um, starting points from around the Rundle Mall because there's more restaurants and things that are going to be opened all the time there. And so with all of the, the walking tours, we've kept them, we have them written in set itineraries, but we are you know, tweaking those ones all the time to make it right. incorporating the best of the experiences um, in and around Adelaide. Fantastic. And uh, no. I think... Oh, sorry. No, I just wanted to um, move on into the Barossa a little bit. I know that sure. you're still offering, and that's definitely your area of expertise. Uh, but maybe take us through some of the highlights now that we know with Restaurant Australia, um, people are be hearing about the great food and wine experiences now more than ever, and you know, culinary tourism is certainly things that people are they're asking for. So, you know, how are your shared tours up into the Barossa or McLaren Vale, Adelaide Hills? Um, you know, what are some typical inclusions that people might expect there? Well, right at the moment, um, I, I, be, having operated for so long, I, I need to just keep inco incorporating other winemakers all the time. So right at the moment, I've been doing a lot of things um, with uh, the owner and winemakers at um, Elderton, and sometimes we might include, um, you know, lunch there, but it's more probably looking into the vineyards and meeting the owners, which has been really popular. Um, also with Murray Street, um, we sometimes might do um, a lunch, particularly where people have come in late, like to, to, today I've got a 12.30, I pick them up at 12.30, we'll go straight up into the Barossa Valley. They want to do as many wineries as possible, but they've also got an 11-year-old child, so we need to tweak that a little bit. But they're fantastic where we can meet with winemakers, but also we could do the lunch and if we've got any food allergies, and then we're not wasting time too if we've got a limited amount of time. Um, like today or tomorrow is the opening of Sepulchsfield, which is really exciting. So um, they'll, they'll have that restaurant. I think we'll, we'll use that a lot more because I know the it was it's Fino Restaurant and they've been operating down in McLaren Vale, which I know very well too. And uh, so that will be really interesting, the, the food and wine matchings that we might incorporate there. And I think people will start to appreciate port a lot more too. I mean, some do, but a lot of women have always found that port was too strong and too alcoholic. So I think, um, and it's a uniquely Australian thing. So I feel that we need to, you know, even if it's right at the end of the day, um, have a, just a small taste of port just to get a, an understanding of something that is uniquely Australian. But yeah. it's all about reds and whites and, and obviously Shiraz is something that we do extremely well. Um, it, but also uh, a lot of Cabernet. We do some really, really good Cabernets that people are often really surprised by. And um, so I think we're are we about to flick to another image right now? Yeah, I think um, it's on the topic of, 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 of that. Yeah, I mean, with, with Restaurant Australia, um, you know, there's such a diversity of the culinary experiences that people can really tailor to. So you would mentioned the new opening of Sepetsfield, which is great, and I have a couple of slides here just on... Um, on what's new, but if you want to have any additional comments maybe about um, the Barossa as a whole as a destination so that people can know that it's so accessible, it's very easy to get to when, um, when they have a, a trip to Adelaide. Well, for example, if we're not doing the scenic route down, we can be up there in just over an hour and be straight into wine tasting. 
you couldn't even do that in Melbourne or Sydney or anywhere else. And as we said, even up into the hills in a half an hour you can be tasting wine. So I think um, people are, as they said, 30 years, 50 years um, since um, what Napa was like 50 years ago or 30 years ago. And so there's still a lot of hands-on where you can still meet the winemaker and um, the vintages are looking interesting. 11 um, was not so good um, where they had a little bit of rain, but generally 12 has been exceptional. A lot of the winemakers are talking up 13 as well too, so it's not common knowledge everywhere. Um, I think we know that food and wine is, uh, is, is one of the main things that South Australia does extremely well, but it's also in being so close to the to the outback and in incorporating those other experiences as well too. People, people are often overwhelmed by the quality of the food. Um, I use um, vintners a lot for lunches and even the fussiest of eaters um, will really love the food there. Hentley Farm is another one where we've got a little bit more time. Um, and obviously the um, the Asian influence with ferment Asian too, which is brilliant. Um, McGill Estate, um, I, I'm just even jumping with McGill Estate. Um, there's a lot of new development with Penfold down in the Barossa. Um, and there's lots of new little places and cellar doors that are, are starting to offer a lot more food. Obviously the cooking schools with Mateo. Um, the chef who was at the Louise, he also does um, cooking schools which are fantastic. So it's really hands-on. We haven't been doing things into sort of vegan and because more and more people now have food allergies and we're trying to you know, incorporate how you might um, work with those a lot more. So I think just um, and families that are traveling together, the cooking schools, and wanting to make their own pasta or um, just any other sorts of food, working with kangaroo. Some people are you know, a bit adverse to it, but others are interested. So we might even do just a bit of smoked kangaroo if they needed to taste kangaroo for the sake of it. But obviously, well, yeah, it sounds it's like great there's, there's quite well. a bit to do. There's a lot of diversity, and I think you know that's the beauty of some of the touring that you're able to offer is the fact that you have these mm. connections and you're able to really put together something as specific as cooking classes and wine tasting or yes. just lead by example and say, you know what, this is what I know is going on this week, and let's do this together. And I think, um, yes. yeah, is there anything else specifically about uh, your insight? Well, I just over this. Was, can I just say, I mean, with the with the insiders, it's really diverse, the, the people we're doing about it. I just wanted to say that I'm getting a lot of things, like I had two little old ladies, 81, 85, along the Great Ocean Road. Um, we've got some luxury versions of going up into the wine country, but then like doing a little bit of the outback as well. So we're incorporating a lot of these other experiences as well too. So Obviously, food and wine is, will always be my main love and main focus. Barossa Valley will definitely be the main thing that people want to incorporate. But it's, it's when you've got less time, how we still offer a great food and wine experience that, that incorporates some of the culture and um, other experiences in Adelaide. I think that's the, the really sort of exciting thing, particularly all these new restaurants and cafes and things that are opening all the time in and around Adelaide, there's a real, you know, you need that insider's view to it and, um, and we know a lot more artists that we can incorporate and people just doing little things that are tucked away in little corners in and around the streets of Adelaide. So yes, it's an exciting place to come so we hope you can send more of your guests and obviously we can tailor it to what they're looking for as well too, you know, be it that they want to walk and do things and or just do things that are not mainstream. So hopefully we can help you in some way. Fantastic. Well I think that's a you know a very good overview and the highlights of what you're able to offer. And I know a couple of people have already commented, um, you know, they'd love to just see some snapshots of the samples of your new tours. So we've shown to you today sort of for the basis yes. of Marianne's website. So all throughout here if you go onto her website, um, there's an Insiders Adelaide Tour tab, which details all the different themed walking tours that she'll offer. They're shared as well as private. Um, so we talked about the desk one today, arts and culture, East End Pub, 
culture and heritage, so please be sure to take a look through um, tastesa.com.au for the latest itineraries. Um, and make sure to yeah, email Marianne directly if you have specific requests. I was just going to say that we do, most of these are all pickups from the hotel, so more than likely, even though we've written it down as Market Culture or Adelaide, I ask them what they're interested in, so we might instead do a little bit of botanic gardens and a bit of shopping, and so we can mix it up a lot, lot more as well too, because if nothing else that I've learnt that, that more and more people are wanting to do things in their own way, so we can make the suggestion of the insiders, and that's the way we can do it, if that's what they want, but more than likely, you know, they might not be able to walk so well, or they want to walk a lot more, and we might sort of cover a lot more ground than what they're, um, what we've written down. So, just um, and the more information that you can send me as well too, just say, you know, we've, you've got two of my guests coming, you know, he's 81, she's you know, you know an athlete, or whatever we need to know, and um, we can sort of tweak it a little bit more to to suit Perfect. them. Well, great. If there's any questions at any time, um, please, now is your chance to type them in the, in the box. Um, I don't think we have any too specific questions. We just have a few compliments to you. Um, people are thinking of you very often, and they have a wonderful time with you, uh, and their clients do too. So I think... Oh, thank um, you so much. <laughs> yeah, people, you know, it's, it's definitely a pleasure, and it's always exciting to have something new and reliable um, in Adelaide for, for their clients. So. Um, I don't think we have I any... I promise we'll keep delivering. We'll keep looking yeah. after you. <laughs> well, it looks like you know most of, the, most of the questions have been answered today, um, but if there's anything additional, please feel free to email myself or Marianne directly uh, to hear more about you know shared tours and half-day touring in Adelaide. So thank you again, Marianne, for taking the time to walk us through this today um, and looking forward to seeing what else is up your sleeve coming down the line. Thank you. Down the Thanks for listening to me, everybody, and I hope to get over the States again soon or come and visit in Adelaide. We look forward to seeing you again. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, Lisa. Bye.